And never mind Scott Brown got elected Senator railing against spending. Senators he will soon be joining today slapping down a task force to get a handle on that spending. Nixing a measure that would have allowed Congress to punt on tough deficit busting decisions and instead let a group of select academics and lawmakers and Obama administration officials offer some recommendations. And this just a day before the president plans to present a freeze on federal spending in his State of the Union address tomorrow. We'll be in Washington for that. But it's a freeze with some very big exceptions, like Social Security and Medicare. Does it sound weird? Well, it does to Meg Whitman as well. The former eBay boss says she knows a thing or two about scoring some good deals. And for taxpayers, these ain't good deals, which is why she is running for California governor and now has a new book that pretty much states her case. The Power of Many, Values for Success in Business and in Life. Meg, uh, good to see you. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me. So you can't pick and choose uh, across the board cuts, I guess, right? They have to be across the board. Yeah, I think they have to be across the board. I mean, we have an enormous deficit, and you've got to look at every single department, every single line item in order to get this back into shape. I mean, that, I think that would be pretty self-evident. What did you think? And it was a lot of Republicans that rejected the idea of this commission, and it was a bit of a, you know, a shell game here. But at least it would have absolved them of any you know, onus and coming down with ideas, right? Yeah, but you know, I think the American people want Congress to be accountable. They want the president to be accountable. But they're not. And I think we've got to find a way for the president and Congress to lead on getting the cost down at the federal government. I mean, the, here's the bad news. We have a government we can no longer afford. And we better face up to that reality and we better start trying to figure out how we're going to get it back into line with what we can't afford. You apply a lot of these businesswomen principles. We should just say for the people that don't know, you're the, the, the highest paid female CEO in history. <laughs> so you stand on that regard. I know you don't like that, but it's attached. It's quite a success. Um, but you point out in your book, the larger point is this. Don't just know the cost of everything. Analyze the value of everything. You extend it to government, obviously, here. And we're not looking at that, right? We're just Correct. leaving large blocks off the table. And we're not getting anywhere. And it doesn't make any sense to do that, right? I mean, there are so there is so much bureaucracy. There's programs that have been layered upon program after program. No one is looking at a return on investment. No one's looking at um, why are we spending this money? And I was interested to see an article the other day, you probably read, that the current administration has the smallest percentage of people who've worked in business of any administration in the last 20 years. Well, the whole, if you think about it, the whole economic team, they really don't have any. Right. They're, they're academics. I don't know. And if know. you've never met a payroll and you have never, you don't understand understand the conditions that are required to create jobs, I think it's a huge issue. And you know, it's not the government's job to actually create the jobs. It's the government's jobs to create the conditions that small businesses and entrepreneurs can grow and thrive in. So let's focus. I would, if I was the president, I would be focusing on deficit reduction, obviously getting spending under control, but I'd be focusing on jobs, which as I travel around California, that seems to be the number one issue. Now you had said early on, Meg, that this, this multi-approach that the administration took was just whatever value was, there was in addressing health care just was muddied in, in just this yeah. blitzkrieg of, of, of programs, right? What would you have done? Well, I'm a big believer in focus, especially given the times in which we live and how complicated things have become. Let's do three things at 100% as opposed to try to do 10 things at 50%. And in California, what I want to focus is on creating and keeping jobs in California cutting government spending, not reducing the rate of increase, actually cutting government spending. And then every governor that comes in says that if you were so fortunate to, to, to get in, I'm sure you would want to stick to that. But time and again, Republican and Democrat, they all say it. They can't do it. But we have to do it this time. Well, I know that. Because we have to do it like nationally, it. but we don't. Well, but we're going to have to because Look at what we did today. we got to get this under control. The president proposes this spending, leaves and everyone huge vetoes. swaths of entitlement so, programs off. You know, in California, and I can't speak as well for the country, but in California, this is all about leadership creating a clear vision of what we're going to do, we're going to a clear focus area, and getting people to focus on three things. And if you are off doing lots of different things, and I will tell you firsthand in politics, the gravitational pull to try to please everyone is enormous. And you just got to have discipline and leadership saying these are the three things we're going to get done, and then you got to lead through it. And you're going to have to, you're going to have to work with the Democrats. There's no question about it. But I think there's common ground that we can find. That well, we what is the Scott found. Brown message? A lot of people say he, he got in there because there was this anti-spending wave more to the point this anti-healthcare spending wave. Um, obviously, you hope to see that that rage or whatever benefit you in California. You're, you're leading in the Republican race. You still trail the likely Democratic, uh, Vic, uh, Jerry Brown, the former governor. 
I think by 10 to 12 yeah, points. Yeah, about 10 which points. Which isn't bad. Which isn't bad. Scott Brown was trailing. Yeah, we were trailing him 20 points two months ago, so we're coming. But how do you capitalize that? You're not a rage candidate. You're not no. a, a shouting pop. I am so. not a career politician. I'm a business person. That, you know, what I've delivered over the years of my career is results. I know how to fix things. I know how to lead. And I tell you, I think this is a very, very important. And I think what Scott Brown showed, and it was an earthquake. I mean, it was just remarkable what happened, is that... Yes, to some degree, I think it was about health care. You know, he said, I'm going to be the 41st senator to vote against health care. But I think people don't like the process. They didn't like what happened, you know, with the Nebraska compromise. They didn't like the Louisiana purchase. But will they forget they, it by November? I don't think so. Really? Because I think people have had it. I see it every day on the campaign trail. But are you worried as a billionaire yourself that they've had it fairly or not with rich people? I get it all the time. And you hear we yep. cover all these speeches of the president. The fat cats, the bank. He's really talking about them. He's not sure. talking about sure. internet sure. sensations like you. But but he, he it more or less is sort of disparaging wealth and yeah. success. You know what I think all Americans, they want an opportunity to be successful. They don't begrudge other people's success if they feel like they have a chance at success. And I think what's happened is people don't feel like the government's working for them, that it's a problem. And you know what, if we can create the conditions for small businesses to grow and thrive, then I think people will feel a lot better about their opportunities. And they've got to feel that the process is working in Washington, and it's, it's clearly not. We, we kid about this before, Mike, but do you ever use your eBay background to just take a lot of the stuff that's on the state and just auction it off. <laughs> yeah, you know, there is lots of surplus How much did the material. Golden Gate Bridge get? Yeah, well, the Golden Gate Bridge is priceless. Okay. <laughs> but no there, bidders. There are, there are surplus materials, of course, that could be sold on eBay. But it speaks to a broader point, which is where we started this conversation. We've got to go every agency, every department, and say, do we still need this program? Can we use technology to do more with less? What's fascinating about California, for the most technologically advanced state, you know, home to eBay and Yahoo and Google, the state government is running on, you know, on technology that's 20 years old. And Nevertheless, we, it, it, it's still an attack the fat cats, but when it, it's convenient um, for certainly this administration. Uh, this is Robert Gibbs earlier today uh, uh, on, on this sort of weird juxtaposition on the Wall Street thing. Let's listen to this. We have to pay the bills for what we've spent already. Well, that's uh, a lot more than you're going to need in one year. Uh, but uh, I, I think to send certainty to the market that the the government isn't about to default on the money that it's spent uh, I, I, is part of what uh, what that's about. You know what's struggling about that, Meg? Now they care about the market. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, know, I, know. Yeah. I know. So what did you think of that? So I don't think that we ought to increase the debt ceiling. We need to get our fiscal house in order. And what this will allow is, you know, to kick the can down the road as opposed to get the fiscal house in order. And, you know, I read a long a number of months ago, you know, we've taken at the federal level, we've, we've found the low-hanging fruit. I don't believe that. There has got to be billions and billions of dollars of cost savings by deploying technology, by consolidating the number of people who work at the federal level, just like in California. And until we are convinced we've done every single thing we can to get spending down, I don't think it makes sense to increase the debt ceiling because it takes people off yeah, the hook. Yeah, but nationally, we have to address these entitlement programs. And even when President Bush tried to do that, his own party turned on him. Yep. It was the third rail, and they said, no, don't touch this one. You know, but I think times have really changed. We can no longer push off that day of reckoning. We're well, going to have did. to. I know, but it's the wrong thing. We've got so to, you'd lecture Republicans as well? I would. You've got to look at everything, and there are big cost buckets. You've got to go after those and try to do more with less. That's what business does every year. How do we do more with less. But you're trying to work this nerdy thing in your favor, which is no offense. <laughs> quite a career over. But it always reminded me, and you repeated again in your book, the great fortune exchange, you know, talking about yourself. She's frumpy, but she delivers. I don't think you're frumpy. Well, thank you for that. What do you make of that? <laughs> that that's an image that you, you know, kind of treasured. Well, as I said, I'm a big believer in focus on a lot of things. And when I was eBay, the great news is we had a dress code of blue jeans and, you know, button down shirts. And, and I focused on delivering but the you, results. But you relish frumpiness. Even like I say, you're not frumpy. <laughs> then you have someone like Sarah Pell on the national stage yeah. who's not frumpy. Uh, but you don't mention her in your book. I talk a lot about John McCain, yes, obviously. You do. I talk a lot about Mitt Romney. I know. And, um, of That's course, why I thought, boy, that missing, that one was a biggie. Well, you know, Sarah Palin, I think, did a remarkable job having been dropped into a very difficult situation. But you, you probably think she know. she was in over her head? Well, my choice would have been Mitt Romney um, as vice president because even though do we didn't see. you think she see, could be president? You know, that's going to be for the American people to decide. I don't think so, do you? 
you know, it's for the American people to decide. <laughs> Fortunately, there's lots of people who I think are going to run for president. Maybe my friend Mitt will again. And uh, that's what's great about America is people get a chance to decide. Uh, but you, you weren't making any bigger statement on her and the message she sends to women or anything like that, I wasn't. That, right? No, 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 no. I mean, my frumpy comment was many years ago. And, yeah, it uh, was. It's, and, you know, but it's I think tough. the most important thing There's is nothing frumpy about this cover. <laughs> the cover the book, nothing frumpy. Oh, about thank you. Well, um, well, go I was ahead. just going to say, you know, in business and in life, in the end, what's the most important thing? You deliver the results. You get it done. And the people of California are crying for the California state government to get it done. They don't want all the details. They just want someone to go up there and fix it.